What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday afternoon slash evening. This is MYG Jeffy T85 here, and I want to talk about some of the uh, free agents that are left on the free agent table, barring the result of the Carlos Correa uh, physical examination or not, whether he still signs with the Mets or not. A couple of other free agents out there, the New York Mets, can go out there and explore to possibly bring into their team as maybe an extra outfielder, as maybe an extra guy that can come in and help out the baseball team going forward. Now, there are a couple of free agents out there the New York Mets could have interest in signing. I'm going to start with the top one, and this is pretty much an insurance just in case Carlos Correa doesn't end up signing with the New York Mets. And I'm talking about Trey Mancini, the former DH outfielder and first baseman for the Baltimore Air Orioles for a very long time, as well as the fact he won a World Series last year with the Houston Astros. Last year, between the Orioles and the Astros, Trey Mancini and 519 at-bats, he had 124 hits with a 239 batting average with 18 home runs and 63 RBIs while scoring 56 runs and with an on-base percentage of 319, a slugging percentage of 391, which is down from what his career average is by at least about 11 points, and an OPS of about 710, which is down by almost 100 points from his career average of OPS. He's also 30 years old right now, going into his age 31 season by the time we get to next year. <laughs> Trey Mancini would be a good depth option to have if you want him as a fourth outfielder. Maybe you could spell a guy like Mark Canna on the outfield or Starling Marte. You could also have him spell Pete Alonso if you want to throw him at the designated hitter position. He can be a guy that could pretty much be another player that can platoon with Daniel Vogelback at the designated hitter position if the New York Mets decide not to go with a guy like the, yo the younger kids like Francisco Alvarez, Mark Frientos, or a guy like Francisco Alvarez. It's really all dependent on the New York, or Brett Beatty. It's really all just dependent on what the New York Mets decide to do in terms of their overall depth at their position players. Another guy the New York Mets could look to sign is former New York Met, actually, who was actually a starting pitcher to start out his career with the New York Mets before he was eventually traded to the Detroit Tigers around the 2018 season. Around the 2018 season. And then he ended up getting traded back. And then he ended up going, signing with the Minnesota Twins during his age 29 season. He started out as a starter before he eventually transitioned into the bullpen. And that's where he pretty much has been during this time being. And in 2022, when he was transitioning to the bullpen in his age 29 season, Fulmer had a 5-6 record with a 3.39 ERA overall in 67 games where he had three saves while pitching 63.2 innings overall. He had 61 strikeouts with a whip of 1.366. So he's a guy that could be a potential bounce-back candidate if you're looking for a player that the New York Mets might have interest in bringing in on a potential short-term deal. I wouldn't mind it. Bring him back to where he first came in. It would not be that bad of a move if the New York Mets end up bringing back a guy like Trey Mancini to the fold in 2023 as a I mean, uh, Michael Fulmer or Trey Mancini as depth players in the bullpen as well as your positional players. <laughs> Another player the New York Mets could have interest in is actually a former Yankee that was actually out for pretty much the entire year due to Tommy John's surgery, and that, of course, is Zach Britton. Zach Britton has pretty much pitched with the Baltimore Orioles before he eventually went to the New York Yankees back in 2018 through a trade, and he was pretty much with the team the entire time until he missed all of 2021 and most of 2021 and a good chunk of 2022 due to Tommy John surgery. And he pretty much, when he came back, he only pitched in three games overall where he had a really poor ERA of 13.5. But when he was healthy, he was one of the better relievers in Major League Baseball with the New York Yankees and the Baltimore Orioles. He actually pitched to a 1.91 ERA and a 1.89 ERA during his 2019 and 2020 seasons, before in 2021, he had a 5.89 ERA before he eventually went out for the season for pretty much the entire time 
during the middle of the summer with Tommy John surgery and did not return with the New York Yankees until the end of last year. So he could be a buy low candidate at his age 39, 35 season. He is a left-handed pitcher. He could provide some type of bullpen help. And he's also a guy that could be a potential bounce back option for the New York Mets if they decide to maybe bring him in as a potential backup option. And then another guy I'm just going to bring up real quickly before I cut the video off is a guy like Adam Duvall, who has mostly been a, a Cincinnati Red for the, the time being, but he's also been a guy that went to the Atlanta Braves. He was traded to the Braves during the 2021 season, and he ended up having a big resurgence with the Braves and actually was a big reason, along with a couple of the other players they traded for, to help lead that team in position to win the World Series back in 2021. He was absolutely fantastic with the Atlanta Braves, where he slugged about uh, he slugged about 16 home runs and drove in 45 RBIs on that season. And he was a big reason why they got to the position that they were, even though he had a down year last year, where he only hit 213 in 2022, with all, in about 287 at bats. We only had 12 home runs and drove in 36 RBIs. But we know the guy has power, and going into his age 34 season, figure why not try the guy as a platoon player or a fourth outfielder with the New York Mets since he is a free agent. Doesn't hurt to try out another big time bat in that lineup if you decide to go with the guy like an Adam Duvall. <laughs> so these are just a couple of the players the New York Mets could have interest in. Whether they, re that, whether they sign Carlos Correa to that long-term deal on a revised deal or they keep the original deal but with certain kinds of clauses in the middle of it. So I just brought out a couple of names that the New York Mets could be interested in in terms of backup players like a Michael Fulmer, a Zach Britton, an Adam Duvall, or Trey Mancini. And if there are other names out there that you think the New York Mets could be interested in as potential platoon players, fourth outfielders, backup first basemen, DHs, or bullpen and starting pitching depth, let me know in the comments section what you guys think. So this is my video for this. Just some players I think the Mets could still have interest in in free agency depending it, whether it matters with the whole Carlos Correa saga or not. So let me know in the video what you think. And if you guys like this video, hit the like button below. Sub up if you haven't already to NYGJeffyT85 for more breaking news, updates, and chatter surrounding the New York Mets. Turn on the bell for notifications of the next video or short that we'll be dropping Excuse me, on the channel surrounding the New York Mets. And let me know in the comments section. If you agree with the players in here, that could be viable options in terms of debt players for the New York Mets in the rotation, the bullpen, or the overall bench in terms of the lineup. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your Tuesday evening. Take it easy, and let's go New York Mets. All you got to do is you have to believe in those boys from Queens.